Today we're going to be looking at this new case from NZXT. It is the H7. There are three new models available, but today we're going to be looking at the straight standard H7. Okay, so today we're looking at the H7 from NZXT. This is the plain H7, not the Flow, not the Elite, but they all share similar features and have a few little differences. But today we're going to be talking about the H7. If you do want to see the reviews about the Elite and the Flow, we will have those available. So let's go for a bit of information about this. So this is the H7 series, which replaces the older H710 and the H710 i cases with all new mid tower lineup blah de blah de blah so basically it's a new case which is called the h7 instead of h710 so first of all let's have a look at the side so you've got this tempered glass side here it does have a nice little peel plastic on it there you go and as you can see it looks pretty nice it looks like uh, the tempered glass on the side does have a slight tint on it because it's very hard to see inside but then again yeah it is definitely got a tint on there so it will make things inside your machine look a little bit dull depending on how you prefer things to look now one of the advantages about this uh, machine is it's pretty much toolless so to take the side off there's no screws to undo or anything like that which has got its advantages and disadvantages as i would like an option where you could screw it on to help protect it stops people getting into your machine with ease stops kids going in there and stuff like that you don't want someone pinching your graphics card when you've got something like a 3090 which has cost you two grand so basically you just push at the top and it pops out it's got little pressure pads and then the bottom as well if i can do it it is a little stiff there we go will lift off but as I said, it is a little bit stiff with these pressure pads. You find that the more you use them, the easier it will be to come off. There is also another piece of plastic on the inside as well. So it will fall out because there is a lip on there, but I would always suggest when taking glass out, you do hold on to it. Okay, so let's have a look at the front. And as you can see, the front is very plain. There's pretty much nothing there other than the NZXT name. There's no mesh or anywhere for air to get in. But saying that, if we turn the case around slightly so you can see the other panel, you, there is actually an air intake there, which does have a mesh on it, which allows obviously air to get in and will stop most of the dust. There is also a slight air intake or a small one on the bottom front as well to help more air get in. But we will be doing tests to compare all three models against each other for airflow. On the back of the case, you do have ventilation at the top, which is not usually something you see on most cases, but there's no dust filter or anything on there to stop dirt getting in or out. You do have a fan pre-installed. It's a 120 millimeter non-RGB fan. There is also another fan on the front, same size, again, non-RGB. You've got your IO panel there, which obviously is going to be the back of your motherboard. You've got seven bays to put in, obviously, graphics cards and whatever is needed. This slot here is slightly different than you see in most cases. That's there so you can uh, attach something like a GPU support arm or something like that, but you can't mount vertical GPUs in this case. You can on the Elite model though. And then you've obviously got the cutout where your power supply will be. Okay, on the top of the case, you've got ventilation there. It does have a dust filter on the inside of the case, which you can remove. But to remove that, you have to actually remove the top panel which again just pushes off and as you can see that's your dust panel there or dust filter which is easy to clean and again it is completely toolless same as both sides of the machine they just pull off with ease and the front as well and on the front of the front panel or the top panel shall we say you've got your power button you've got two usb3 ports there you've got usb type c as well as a combined audio socket Okay, on the bottom of the case, you've got four plastic feet, which have got rubber inserts on them to stop it sliding around. And it's got quite a good distance off of the actual ground, so it allows air to flow. The mesh over the power supply does slide out with ease, meaning you don't have to turn it upside down. And also the mesh what goes across the front of the case does pull out as well. Quite hard at the angle I've got it, but you can see there, it just pulls out. 
If you wish to take the front panel off, again, it's very easy. You just basically put your fingers in the insert and give it a good pull. Again, it is pretty stiff when it's new. Here we go. Uh, but there you go. And as you can see what the insides looks like, and you've got plenty of room to fit your water coolant, and there's that included fan there as well. Right, okay, let's go on to some of the specifications. So first of all, the max CPU clearance is 185 millimeters. The max GPU clearance is 400 millimeters. So no GPU, which is over 400 millimeters long. Front fan and radiator clearance is 60 millimeters. The top fan and radiator clearance is 30 millimeters. So it gives you a rough idea. The depth for the cable management at the back is pretty good between 18 and 22 millimeters so plenty of room there for actually putting your cables so that's really 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 good so the usb on the front is usb 3.2 gen 1 type a and you've got two of those ports and then you've got the type c port as well now the rgb connectors or controllers and so forth there is none on this machine. Only the Elite model has RGB controller built in, and the same with fans and so forth. This has none built in. Fan support on the front, you can fit three 120s or three 140s. On the top, you can fit three 120s or two 140s. And on the rear, you can fit either a 120 or a 140. Radiator support on the front is 360, also 360 on the top. And the rear is 140, which makes it pretty straightforward. And every model in the range, those specifications are basically the same with the exception of the RGB controllers. Right, as you can see here, we have got the black model in this case. They also do a white model as well as a black and white model combined. And that goes throughout the whole range. Each model has three different options, potentially more if NZXT wants to. Now, let's have a look at the inside. So you've got plenty of room inside for, obviously, your motherboard GPUs, as we've mentioned. Let's start at the top. So you've got a nice long cutout, really long, for feeding all your cables through the top from either a water cooler or your CPU uh, power cables and stuff like that. So plenty of room for feeding cables through. You've got a nice big cutout here for the back of your CPU on the motherboard, so you can obviously mount your water coolers and stuff or air coolers without having to take the board out of the case. On top of that, there is holes on the shroud at the bottom where your power supply would go, so you can put your cables like your USB and so forth, audio cables up through there and any additional power cables if you wish. And there is a nice hole in the middle so you can feed up a gpu cable if you wanted to power your gpu this bar here is mainly there to hide your cables behind so when you're routing them they go through there without them having to go through little holes and bits with rubber on and different bits like that now the shroud itself does not have a cutout on it, so it doesn't matter what power supply you fit in there. Even if you've got a top-end NZXT one, what's got a nice NZXT sticker on the side, which says it's NZXT and it's the best one in the world, you're not going to see it. It would be nice to have an option with a cutout there and maybe something covering it, so you could either show or not show the power supply. But otherwise, pretty good. Plenty of room, as we said, for water cooling and air cooling, but it does only come with two 120 millimeter fans. Okay, so the back side of the case, or the back side of the motherboard, or whatever you want to call it, this is this bit here. Now, the first thing what I'd noticed, and this is one of the best things I've seen on pretty much most cases on the market, no matter what the price range, the cable tidying, the amount of options you've got. You've got one or two little cable tie, tie downs if you want to use them, but you've got all this routing here which has got velcro on it to keep the cables in you've got some at the top up here and you've even got some here and down the side here so pretty much every cable you should be able to put in there neatly nice and tidy no matter how crap your cable tidying skills are you've got options there with plenty of room which is absolutely brilliant on top of that you've got two bays here which are not entirely screwless would have been good if they were considering the rest of the case is screwless uh, it's held in with two screw well, one screw each but you'd be able to fit a two and a half inch drive there solid state drive or hard drive if anyone still uses them uh, on there 
You've also got room down here for three and a half inch drives as well. I'll just take out this box, what's included, so you can put two drives in there if you wish. Inside the little brown box, it does come with all the screws individually packed and everything in there. So you have got a few options as well as an additional two, two and a half inch bays, which I'm guessing will fit into the three and a half inch area there if you wish. On top of that, we've got some nice cabling. It's all black, some flat, some rounded. Apart from, yeah, they did it, guys. They have put a, or oh, included a USB header, or sorry, they've included an audio header, which is RGB colored, shall we say, or sachet packet colored, or rainbow effect colored. You've got this nice black case. Everything is black. You've got a nice black motherboard. Let's just say you've got one of those new uh, NZXT uh, motherboards, which is completely black, sort of shrouding all over it, black cooler. You've got a black GPU, black power supply, everything's black. And then you've got a rainbow effect coming out of your HD audio. Come on, guys, it's 2022. This shouldn't still be done in this day and age. You see cases which you can buy for 20 quid which managed to cover that up in black, so there's no excuse. Otherwise, the other cables are all right, there's no problems with them. There might be a slight bit of white on the one cable for the front panel with connecting on, connection on there, but otherwise, that's it. Um, otherwise, it looks pretty good. So to test in, we tested the CPU by running Cinebench for 30 minutes and getting the average temperature of the CPU. The standard H7 got 72 degrees. When you took the front off, it dropped down to 68. The H7 Flow with the mesh front got 69. And when we took the front off, it dropped down to 67. But the Elite was really, really hot at 71 degrees Celsius. When we took the front off, though, it did drop down to 62 degrees due to the extra fans it has over the other cases. On this test, we basically did the same thing again, but this time put four 140 millimeter fans, what come with the Elite case, in all the other cases. So we got an even playing field on the amount of fans. And as you can see here, we got 68 degrees on the H7. Take the front off, it dropped down to 62. H7 flow was 63 degrees, down to 62 if you take the front off. And the Elite still really hot, 71, and drops down to 62. So as you can see, the Elite is a very hot case. So in this test, we test the GPU temperature while we're running Fermark again, average temperature over 30 minutes. And as you can see, the temperature ranges between 68 degrees down to 64, just showing that the Elite can cool down a lot better with those extra fans if it actually didn't have the glass on the front. But otherwise, the temperatures weren't that much of a difference in all reality and won't really make much difference playing any games or anything along that lines. So in conclusion, the NZXT Case H7, or at least the standard version here, performs actually better than we expected. Otherwise, the case itself is very good. I like the tallest design, or most of the tallest design, should we say. Plenty of room for your cabling and stuff like that in there. You're not going to have any issues, well, unless you get a really crap power supply that hasn't got long enough cables, but generally you shouldn't have any issues. So if you like that minimalist design, then this is probably the case for you. Did you enjoy this video about the H7? Well, why not look at our videos about the H7 Elite right up here, click that box there, or you can have a look at the high airflow version, the H7 Flow in this box just here. Otherwise, make sure you give us a like, thumbs up, comments, whatever you want, but uh, make sure you do it just below.